everyone, this is Melissa, and I'm the Talkative Introvert. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about body dysmorphic disorder, or BDD, and how it relates to me. But before I do that, um, I did want to read out another um, Apple Podcast review. So if you've been listening to my previous episodes, I've been asking people to please help support the show by reading and reviewing the podcast to help kind of get it out there and, you know, spread the word, if you will. Um, for today, I wanted to share one review by Irish Dance is Life. So just based on that username, I think I know who this is from. But regardless, if I know you're not, I I appreciate you going out and taking the time to leave me a review. And I am so thankful for it. So the review is such a simple question, but one that everyone should ask themselves at some point in life. Do you consider yourself an introvert or extrovert? I love the way this information is discussed. It's presented in a way that's relatable. Everyone can take something away from this podcast. Highly recommend. Thank you so much for that review. That means a whole lot. And I'm glad that you like it enough to put a review and you like it enough to recommend it to others. So thanks so much. If you leave a review, I will feature it in a future episode. Okay, so back on topic. If you haven't heard it yet, I did a episode not too long ago about um, being in therapy. So this is kind of like a continuation from that episode. If you haven't heard it already, please go check it out. It's just called therapy. Um, it's kind of like an intro because there's other subjects I want to talk about, but I realized that I couldn't really talk about without first addressing the fact that I am in therapy. So it's like a little intro episode. It's not that long. I think it's like, I don't know, half an hour or something like that. Um, but yeah, so yeah. And if you didn't hear that episode, yes, I am in therapy. Um, and, uh, what I mentioned in that episode too, that I was very hesitant about posting it just because like the stigma behind it and letting, you know, having it be public and having friends and family find out if they do listen to this episode. So assuming they do, I don't know if they do. Um, but I realized that there shouldn't be any stigma about it. And if I, and the type of person to endorse therapy. And I think it's a very beneficial, you know, thing to do. If you really need the help, then why should I be ashamed of it as well? Um, but I do want to mention, like, I know some people think that therapy is kind of like a last resort or it's something very, very serious. Like you must have a really awful life or a horrible life or you're horribly depressed. And that's not really the, the fact, right? Like it can be I'm not saying it's not, but um, it doesn't necessarily mean like you feel like it's the end of the world. Um, you can just go to therapy just for one issue or what have you, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're just like overly depressed and suicidal and you think your life is the worst. Cause I mean, I do believe I have a good life. I have a very loving husband, a beautiful dog, a great support system. You know, I, during this pandemic, I didn't lose my job, which is very good. So I still have a job. I still have a roof over my head. I still have a working car. So, you know, I, I do have a, uh, fairly good life, I think. And I'm, I'm a fairly happy person. However, with that said, um, what I struggle with a lot is my self image, which might be apparent considering I am doing a podcast rather than like a YouTube channel, which I mean, not saying that people who do a podcast have a self image problem, but that is uh, a reason why I prefer a podcast over a YouTube video. Cause I, um, in all honesty, like I do love podcasts, podcasts, and I do listen to it like almost every morning, especially like when I walk my dog, I do listen to a podcast every morning, but I mean, I do mostly watch YouTube videos and I follow a lot of YouTubers. So, but you know, I like the podcasting and apparently you guys like my episodes too. So yay. Um, anyways, so in my therapy episode, I didn't really talk about why I started therapy. And so, um, again, like I said, I, I do have a fairly good life. However, I do, um, struggle with my self image. I originally thought 
I have, like, I had an eating disorder. And I don't think I do. I mean, I'm not diagnosed or anything like that. And, um, but the reason why I thought I had an eating disorder is because I watched a, that Demi Lovato documentary on YouTube. I don't know if you guys, if I can find it, I don't know if it's still on YouTube. Um, but if I can find it, I'll link it if you guys want to watch it. It's pretty interesting. Like it's interesting to learn about her life, but I guess she has an eating disorder. And she was explaining some things in the documentary that I thought like, oh, I, I kind of do that. So do I have an eating disorder? And they went down like this whole rabbit hole on Google and was like trying to research it. And um, I forgot what website, but I did stumble upon a website. I'm sure if you Google it, um, you'll probably find it. But I did stumble upon a website that like had you take a quiz or a test and there's like a scoring system. And if you score it above, I don't like, I don't know, 20 or something like that, um, that you should seek help. So I did take something like similar to that. So it's not very, like, I don't know how reliable it was, but it was still enough to, for me to think of maybe I should just talk to a therapist instead of like, like going through articles after articles and being unsure and not really knowing you know, whether I do or not, I figured, you know, um, I'll just, I'll just reach out to a professional therapist and figure it out. Um, especially, um, I did mention in the therapy episode two that because we are in the pandemic, my job offered free sessions. So for me, like it wasn't a big deal. Like originally, like, uh, maybe a couple of years out years ago, I was thinking about going to therapy or just like testing it out, but it's super expensive. So I was like, eh, my life isn't terrible. So <laughs> I just didn't bother and I didn't want to spend the money. So, um, so with COVID actually, uh, with the free sessions, I figured, well, what harm is it to just check it out, see if I like it, see if maybe it'll be helpful with some of the problems that I have. And I don't know, there's no impact Either way, if I don't like it, I'll just stop. If I do like it, then I can continue and still um, have those free sessions. So, yeah. Anyway, so back to, like, Demi Lovato. So, yeah, so I thought I had an eating disorder, blah, blah, blah. And I talked to my therapist. And then I forgot what happened, but I also went down another rabbit hole um, learning about body dysmorphic disorder or BDD. So I'm going to call it BDD. Um going for because it's just too long way too difficult to keep saying um so i did go down another rabbit hole and i looked up bdd because i didn't know what it was before i just knew what eating disorders were and after researching about bdd um i think i stumbled upon it like watching a youtube channel or youtube video i don't know i don't remember how i learned about bdd but i didn't know about it before and it's just some, it's something new that i learned about um anyway so going down that rabbit hole i realized i i think i resonate more with bdd than i do with an eating disorder because with an eating disorder um like i don't know everything about eat like eating disorders or anything, but like, I'm not anorexic. I'm not bulimic. I don't really binge eat. Um, I don't like, I don't know. I just, I don't, I'm not professional, so I don't know what I'm saying, but I don't think I resonate with that as much as I do with BDD. So that's why I thought like I have that instead. So I am talking to my therapist about it and trying to figure that out. And so Oh, I do want to put a disclaimer. Uh, I'm sure you've already guessed by now, but I am not a professional. Uh, I just Google documents and read random articles. And um, that's where I get my info from. So I'm not a professional. I'm not educated. Please just, if you think you have it, um, I would highly suggest you talk to a professional to make sure that like you actually do have it and it's not something else. But yeah, so a, a lot of my information that I'm going to read out in this episode comes from the BDD Foundation website. So I will link that in the show notes. I feel like 
I mean, I'll go through some some stuff, but if you want further information, go check out that website. It has a lot of great resources. They also have videos, and if you think you have BDD, they do have um, links in there to help you like ha- help you get the help you need. So please go check that out in the show notes. I'm also not professionally diagnosed with BDD as well. I think that's something I have to like go through my doctor, which I haven't done. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I'm going to like, I don't know if it matters to me to be professionally diagnosed. Um, but this episode is kind of just going over what BDD is and why I resonate with it. And if it's something that is really similar to you or maybe you resonate with as well. Um, I, it's kind of, this episode's kind of like awareness. It's like therapy for me to talk about it, but it's also like awareness for you, the listener. Cause if you struggle with the same things I struggle with, you may or may not have BDD, but if you do, there's like a ton of resources out there and I'll link the BDD foundation website in the show notes. So you can go and check that out. All right. So BDD, what is it? So BDD is characterized by a preoccupation with one or more perceived defects or flaws in appearance, which is unnoticeable to others. Sometimes the flaw is noticeable, noticeable, but it's a normal variation or is not as prominent as the sufferer believes. Also, individuals with BDD often feel defined by their flaws. BDD usually develops at adolescence, which I mean, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm not surprised by that fact. Um, BDD is also hard to get an actual count, but the known percentage is about 2% of the population. However, it can be more than that. So according to the website, it is recognized as a hidden disorder as many people with BDD are too ashamed to reveal their main problem. I also want to mention that I was also mistaken in my previous episodes in the therapy episode, like towards the end, I mentioned that this may resonate more with women, but I actually found out that both men and women suffer from this equally. And then in the website, it said at least in the West. So I don't know if that means, I don't know what that means by like the West, like America. I don't know. So, but apparently like in the West, it is it's equal between men and women. They both like suffer from it equally. Um, but I did listen or listen, I did watch a YouTube video about BDD and apparently there is a rise in men now suffering from BDD. So, um, maybe, I don't know. It didn't really go into why that is. So I'm wondering like, Maybe men are more open about it nowadays, or maybe men are feeling more pressured to look a certain way, unlike before. Um, I'm not sure. So I didn't like look into into that, and I couldn't find too much about that. So um, I did think that was interesting, though, that they are um, that men are now suffering it from it more, or yeah, more than before. So that is pretty interesting. Like I makes me wonder like what happened in our society for that to happen. Um, okay. So the difference between men and women though, so there is a different, or there's not very much of a difference, but the main difference is, are the areas that they are focused on. So I also learned that men, um, who suffer from BDD f- has a lot of focus on their genitalia, their body build, and thinning or balding of the hair. Whereas women are more focused on skin, stomach, weight, breasts, buttocks, thighs, legs, hips, and excessive body hair, which is a lot. But I guess I agree with all that. Um, so it's a, it's a lot more focused areas than the men. The kind of, the women's kind of just encompass your whole body though. Okay. Anyways. All right. So the symptoms are being extremely preoccupied with a perceived flaw in appearance that to others can't be seen or appears minor, strong belief that you have a defect in your appearance that makes you ugly or deformed, belief that others take special notice of your appearance in a negative way or mock you, engaging in behaviors aimed at fixing or hiding the perceived flaw that are difficult to resist or control, such as frequently checking the mirror, grooming, or skin picking, 
attempting to hide perceived flaws with styling, makeup, or clothes, constantly comparing your appearance with others, frequently seeking reassurance about your appearance from others, having perfectionist tendencies, seeking cosmetic procedures with little satisfaction, and avoiding social situations. So after reading those symptoms, I feel like some people might say that, well, I kind of resonate a little bit with all of those points. So do I have BDD? And for me, from my understanding, like, well, it depends, you know. I think the problem is when a person's perceived flaws control how they live their day-to-day lives. Like those flaws in their self-image affect what they do like every day and the choices that they make every day. So if you're so preoccupied with your flaws that it gets in the way of living your life fully, maybe you have BDD. Um, but again, you know, I would check out the website and the website actually has a, has a quiz that you can take that scores you. Um, of course, that's not a diagnostic or diagnosis. Like you ha- still have to go get that professionally done, but it might help you kind of understand whether you are or not, and whether maybe you should seek help. So why do I think I have BDD? So I I may or may not have it, um, but I do highly resonate with it. So <laughs> I guess maybe I do have it. I don't know. Um, and so like one of the questions I did ask myself was like, well, do I like who I am? And yes, I do love who I am now. Like, I I think I've mentioned that, like, before in previous episodes. I do like um, who I am now. And I know, like, the key word is now. (laughs) Because, like, I'm not in my early 20s anymore. Like, I'm I'm nearing 30. I'm going to be 29 in a couple of months. And I'm not really in that finding myself phase, like, I don't know if you guys, if you guys are my age, if you remember that, like in your early 20s and like during college and a little after college, you're kind of just trying to figure out who you are and figure out like where you fit in this world and like how you want to be in a, as an adult and all that and blah, blah, blah. And I feel like I'm kind of phasing out of that and I feel like I'm kind of becoming who I probably will be for the rest of my life. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. I still, I'm, you know, again, I'm only going to be like 30. So, um, I may change later on, but I feel like I'm at a point where this is, I'm comfortable with who I am and I like who I am personally, like internally. Um, cause I have grown a lot since my early twenties. Like I do feel like I am more positive now. Um, I used to get angry a lot. I mean, I still, I still get angry, um, but I used to have a really bad temper. I got it from my dad, um, but only select people have seen me like absolutely angry. So there's not like a whole lot of people who have seen me and I used to get angry more frequently. And, um, but I feel like that's kind of, I've grown a little out of that. Um, so I'm not like as angry as I used to be. And I let go of things a little more. Like I don't hold grudges like I used to. Like I'm sure there's still some things I still hold. I can't think of any right now, but it's not as bad as it used to be. And then I also feel like as I'm getting older, I'm also having more empathy, which I feel like it's the biggest change. And, um, the biggest change for me, cause like, uh, if you, guys listen to my INTJ episode, like INTJs kind of have difficulty with reading emotions and just emotions in general. But as I'm getting older and like, as I'm growing and as I'm like, um, also growing as a partner, like with my husband, we've been together for 13 years and he's kind of taught me a lot about empathy and try like understanding people's emotions and understanding all, all that jazz. Um, and also like along with that, like, like being more empathetic, I also try as much as possible to not talk badly about people. And that's really, really hard for me to do because that's all my family does is gossip. And some things are like, okay, like you can't help it, you know, like you can't help talk badly about that person because that person maybe like just makes the same mistakes over and over and over again, or you're just frustrated with this person or you try to help them. And I don't know, 
there's some things where you just can't like not talk badly about them. But I try to pick and choose what I say more. Like it's not as like before it was very petty and very immature and there's no like you're just talking bad just to talk bad about someone. So I like as I'm getting older, I'm like kind of picking and choosing what I say and I um and I also try to be um nicer to people like I how do I explain this like I'm I can be very blunt and I don't know that I am I just I just am I guess and I realize that I need to learn (laughs) to not be so blunt because it does hurt people's feelings so I've learned to choose and pick my words wisely and um you know being more empathetic like I'm starting to understand like the things I say that may hurt someone and Um, I don't know. Cause a lot of humor too in my family that I've noticed is that like teasing people or making fun of people in front of their face is like a lot of the jokes that we make or a lot of the jokes my family makes are those kind of jokes. And then, and sometimes like, yeah, they're funny. And sometimes the person they're joking about laughs about it. But at the same time, like you don't know whether they're just laughing just to laugh because the crowd is laughing or, if they actually think it is funny, you know what I mean? So I try to be careful with that too and try not to use that kind of humor. Um, it does slip because that's just what I'm used to and that's what I grew up around. And, but I do try to be careful with what I say and I try not to hurt people's feelings or, you know, I try to keep people's feelings in mind when I say something. Obviously I'm not perfect and everything I do is a work in progress. So, but Overall, I like who I am, and I like my personality, and I like the adult that I'm becoming, because, like, I feel like when I was, like, in my early 20s, I was kind of a toxic person, and I don't know if other people agree with that. I've never, like, (laughs) I've never asked my friends or family, but for me, like, for me, I think that some of the things I did and some of the things I say when I was younger can be a bit toxic. And so uh, I, as an adult and being more mature, like I can see that now. So I try to not be so toxic, but yeah. Um, however, so yeah, I do like who I am now. I like my personality and I like the adult I'm becoming. However, do I like how I look? No, simply no, like straight up. Hell no. Like I, I don't, I don't like how I look. And Um, I mean, I don't think I'm grotesque or anything. Like, I don't think I am some horrid monster or anything like that. Like, you know, I don't think I'm like deformed in any way. Um, but I, I just don't like how I look. I don't like my image. I, I don't like, um, a lot of my features. And so, like, if you ask me what flaws I have, I can probably give you like pages and pages of things I can think of just going from the top of my head down. And honestly, I was going to write it all out, but then I was like, no, this isn't healthy. This doesn't make sense to do. I'm not going to do this because I did start a list and it just, just from my face alone, I didn't even make it to my face because I was like, okay, well, I don't like my hair. I don't like my hair type. I don't like my hairline. I don't like the amount of hair I have. And I, and it's just like, okay, that's just the hair alone, you know? So I was like, eh, I'm just going to move on. So, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, so no, I don't like how I look. Um, I struggle a lot with looking at pictures of myself, um, which might be weird because I did say in a previous episode that I do want to take more pictures with friends and family, but that's more just to preserve memories. Like I don't, uh, doesn't mean I'm going to post it on social media. Like I don't, I mean, if you guys follow me on Instagram now, like the talkative introvert podcast, Instagram, there's no pictures of me, if you haven't noticed. There's pictures of the people who guest on my show, but there's no like actual picture of myself. And my personal Instagram, my profile picture isn't of me. It's of my brother's dog in like my shoes, I think. It's like the one of the very first pictures I took when I had um when I made an Instagram account like years ago. 
it's probably been almost 10 years. I've never changed my profile picture on Instagram. <laughs> and then Facebook, I do have a profile picture, which is fairly new. Um, but I was really, I, I don't know. I don't use it or I don't use Facebook that much. I don't ever see it, but yeah, so I don't like looking at pictures of myself. So I do want to work on that though. I want to work on looking at myself more. So I'm more comfortable with my own image. Like if I'm in a good mood, I avoid looking at mirrors because I know if I look at it, then it'll just make me sad, which, ugh. so I don't look at mirrors. I mean, obviously I look at mirrors if like I'm at a restaurant and I want to make sure there's nothing in my teeth or like, I want to make sure my hair is not all like in a array. I don't know, disarray or whatever, but like, I don't spend a lot of time just looking at myself because I don't like that. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. And, um, one of the things why I thought I have BDD, because it does mention how it's like affects your choices and what you do and all that. And so there have been times in the past where I'll decide to just stay home. I mean, of course I'm an introvert, so I like staying home. So that's normal for me, but like, it doesn't mean I don't like going out. And the, there's been a few times where I just don't go out because I just can't feel good in my skin at that moment. And I don't feel like leaving the house. And so, um, Brandon helps a lot with that though. Like there is this one time we were going to go out and I just wasn't feeling good and I didn't, I didn't like how I looked and I couldn't find anything to wear, even though I literally wear the same clothes over and over again. And I just don't know, like that day specifically, I just, I don't know, I just couldn't feel good in my own skin and Brandon helps a lot with that. And he's very understanding too. Like he will be like, well, we don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Um, or he'll, but then he like helps encourage me. Like he'll say like nice things, you know, like you look really good in this thing or that looks really good. Or, um, I don't see what you see. Like, I don't see the problem. <laughs> like he'll, you know, reassure me that I look fine, that I don't look like a hideous monster or anything like that. So that really helps a lot. Um, but it's still hard, you know, it's still hard. And this isn't like a new thing. Like this has been going on since childhood. And it's, you know, what really, what definitely like contributed to a lot of this self image issues that I have definitely stems from childhood. I mean, like, what doesn't stem from childhood. So, you know, my family is a big factor in that. And I'm not saying that my family, like everyone's terrible or anything. It's just that I have very, like, they're very beautiful. <laughs> like my, my cousins and my nieces and, oh, oh yeah, I forgot. So my nieces are my age. They're, you know, in their thirties or older. Um, I just want to like explain that. Cause like, I'm obviously not jealous of my little nieces. Cause I mean, they're little kids are cute no matter what, <laughs> but my nieces that I'm talking about are my age. So my cousins and my nieces that are like my age growing up, they're just very beautiful women and, or they were beautiful girls. Now they're beautiful women. And they're also very thin and they're also very fit. And they could pretty much wear and eat whatever they want. And I was always a big girl. I don't know why, like, I wasn't blessed with the same metabolism as everybody else. It really sucks because our family's big on eating. They love to eat. And I, I mean, I love to eat. I love food. And, but I just didn't have the same metabolism as everybody else. And it wasn't like I wasn't super active. I mean, yeah, because I did take swimming classes. My mom enrolled us in swimming classes and tennis. And like when the guy cousins came over or my guy nephews came over, we would play soccer, football, like, you know, like all that stuff. So and my brother lived the same lifestyle as I did, but he like had like a little chubby phase, but then that was it. And he's pretty much been skinny his whole life until like even now he's still skinny. Um 
But yeah, so my family was always, they're all beautiful, like amazing looking women and men. And I've just always been kind of the ugly duckling. And I don't know if they think the same thing, but that's just how I always felt. Um, especially being always bigger than everybody else. And I did like got made fun of, you know, like that's kind of, I guess that's kind of like the normal thing that happens if you're a bigger person too, or a bigger kid, you do get made fun of because kids are as cute as they are. They're also very ruthless and mean and say awful things and those type of things, even though they may not be that way now, like it still like sticks with you, you know, like you still remember that. Like my nephew, he still remembers this too. He remembers making this joke. So I think I mentioned to him like a couple years ago, but so my nickname at home is Mia. So M I A. And this joke has like, I will always remember this joke. Like I, I don't know if I'll ever forget it unless I have like dementia or something, but he made this joke and he asked me, how do you spell Mia? And then he said, you spell it by, or you spell it by F-A-T. And I will never forget that. Not saying like we're not on good terms anymore. Like we are on very good terms. We're very close. And um, he will never say anything about my body. He has never mentioned anything about my body or said anything negative. It's just, you know, kids being kids and saying those awful things. But like, I just, I will never forget that, you know, cause I was just very, very hurtful. And like, I would get those type of comments, not just from family, but like, just from like kids at school or just, you know, anywhere. And so that's like a big contribution to my like self image issues, you know, and also just like, uh, my parents. So my mom, My mom is, first of all, my mom is amazing. I love my mom. She has, you know, she came here from the Philippines and she left everything she knew to, you know, have a family here and to raise me and my brother. And I love her and she's a, she's an angel and I would be a mess like the day that she dies. And I sometimes low key wish I died before her. So I um, love my mom love, love, love her. But with that said, um, (laughs) she has definitely made comments, but like she genuinely cares about my health because the thing with my family is that yes, they're beautiful, but they also have a terrible medical history. There's diabetes, there's heart problems, high blood pressure, thyroid problems, gout. There's, uh, lung problems, but that's, I'm pretty sure that's just from smoking. Um, but all kinds of like medical issues in our family. So my mom generally cares about my health. So when she mentions like my size or whatever, it's because she's scared that I might get sick and end up like being like relying on medication the rest of my life. However, like as a kid, those comments, like I don't, I don't understand that aspect, you know, like I don't understand the whole, like her caring about my health. All I understand is like the comments that she made and like how it made me feel, you know what I mean? So like, um, like my, I was big, but my brother wasn't right. So I, I mentioned that earlier and comments were always made to me, like to tell me to eat more veggies and eat more fruits, but then they wouldn't say that to my brother because he's already skinny because that's kind of like the thing, right? Like if you're overweight, you're unhealthy. And if you're skinny, you're healthy, even though that may not be true. That's just like what people think in their mind. And so sometimes I'm like, if I'm, um, if I'm eating a lot or like at a party or an event or something, like she would tell me I shouldn't eat that. And she'll say like, enough, that's enough. When my brother is literally sitting like right next to me and he's eating, he's either eating the same amount or even more. Cause my brother can eat a lot. Like he can pr- eat more than I can eat. Um, but he's skinny and he has a good metabolism, metabolism. But as a kid, like I said, like I didn't get that. I didn't understand why I couldn't do something, but he could. And so as a kid, I thought, well, that's unfair. How come Kuya can eat more? So that's why, like, I didn't understand that as a kid. Like, I understand it now, why my mom says those things. And, like, I get it now. Like, she just 
cares about my well-being and all that. And but there's like like I said, like with my nephew, with the joke that he made, those things just like stay with you up until a adulthood. So you don't like forget about those things, you know? And there's this one so I want to share this one story. So when I was younger, I don't remember how old I was at the time. Um but I've I've just always been big since I was little. I don't even know. The only time I was ever skinny was like a portion of high school and college and the, that was it. Um but there's this one time when I was little, my aunt and my aunt is honestly the best. I love her and I miss her. I think I'm going to go visit her. Um, but she wanted me to come sit with her and sit in her lap. And I was like, hey, you know, like, I love my aunt. Like, of course. And I'm a little kid, so I want to go sit in my aunt's lap. And so I went and sat on her lap. And then my mom came out and she, like, freaked out. And she's like, um, don't sit on your aunt's lap. You're going to hurt her. You know, and like my mom's a very caring person and she's always very conscious about people's feelings and like she doesn't want anyone to get hurt. Like she's very like a caring person. So in her mind, she's genuinely thinking of my aunt's lap. Like, oh my God, I'm like my daughter's crushing her lap. And but to me as a little kid, I'm just thinking like, well, like that made me feel like I'm just this humongous monster, you know? Even though that's not the intent of my mom. And my aunt, being my aunt, she's amazing. And she, like, um, this probably doesn't, like, this is probably not significant to her. And I don't even know if she'll even remember this. But this meant the world to me. But she basically, like, advocated for me. And she was like, no, it doesn't even hurt. I can't even feel you. That's what she said. Like, I don't know why, but I can, I remember exactly that she said, I can't even feel you on my lap. And, um, I will, I just, I always remember that because it made me feel really good. And my mom's like, okay, well, if you're fine, then it's fine. And she just made me feel like I wasn't as big as I thought I was when she, cause in reality, like I was a big kid, so I probably did crush her. (laughs) But because she is just such a nice person, like she would never say that to me. And, um, I will always remember that from her. But again, like I said, my mom, like I love my mom. I don't resent her or anything or in any way because, again, she's just scared for my well-being because she doesn't want me to be unhealthy. Like during this whole COVID thing is freaking her out. Like she doesn't want us to do literally anything. She just wants us to bunker down and not go outside until it's all over. Like she really, (laughs) that's how much she cares about it or, you know, cares about our well-being because whether it's real or not, like she doesn't want to take the risk, you know? And so I get that. And, um, she also knew that people made fun of me. And so she, even though she made those comments, like she's still an advocate for me. Like this one time we went to the Philippines and I forgot, I think I was seven or eight. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Um, but we went to the Philippines and for, I don't know why, but some reason our family there didn't realize that my brother and I understood Tagalog. <laughs> um, and someone made a comment about my weight and my mom reacted real quick. She like turned and looked at the, I think it was my aunt. And she like turned and looked at her real quick. And she's like, she can understand you, you know? And so, <laughs> so I always appreciate that. Like my mom doesn't like, she's a, she's definitely a mama bear. She doesn't like when people, you know, s- talk ill about her children and especially to our face. Cause she's like, that's not, you know, that's not okay. Don't talk to her like that. And I'll always remember that. Cause I thought, I don't know, that just kind of made me laugh because, cause she like instantly reacted and I will always, always remember that. So and it's it's nice being an adult and understanding that now it just did suck as a kid not understanding my mom's intentions but she she means well um so yeah my upbringing didn't exactly help uh but neither did my culture so i mentioned this before by in filipino um I mean, yeah, I just talked about my story about being in the Philippines. So I am Filipino, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong about Filipino culture, but there are some things I don't like about it. And the biggest thing I don't like about Filipino culture is this major, 
major emphasis on beauty. Like there's always beauty pageants, like the fiestas and like every event has some type of beauty pageant associated with it. Um, the schools put a lot of focus on the, on beauty. Like they, I'm friends with like my family in the Philippines and even the schools, they'll do like beauty pageants or they'll do like the talent shows. But then even the talent shows are very like over the top. It's not like here in America, like like people wear or kids wear like these elaborate ornate costumes and they do their makeup really well and like their hair. And it's just like a large emphasis on beauty and like looking good on a stage. And then, like, another thing that I hate, and I'm sure this is, this probably goes for other cultures as well, but Filipinos love, like, Caucasian features for some reason. So, like, they like the pointy, slim nose, the little scope, or scope, little ski slope is what we call it. If they have the little ski slope nose, you know, it's, like, skin thinny and has, thinny, thin and has, like, the little, I don't know how to call it, like the little button nose. Um, my niece has it. It's really cute. Um, but she would be cute even with a regular Filipino nose because she's half white. So she gets, she got like the white nose. Um, anyways, (laughs) but Filipinos have, it's flat and it's wide. So we call it like the tomato nose. I don't know what other people call it. That's just what we call it in our family, but we have the Filipino nose, but the desirable nose is the ski slope. Um, And Filipinos also like light skin and long legs and they like tall people. Basically just the opposite of them. Um, People, you know, people want what they can't have. But it's so damaging to your self-image, especially for young kids, like young, you know, girls and boys, you know, because they're born a certain way, but then that's not what's favorable. Like in the Philippines, I don't think it's just the Philippines. I think it's just a lot of cultures who have dark skin, but there's whitening soap. Like I remember when I was little, my mom used to buy the stuff. It's called, uh, what's it called? Escanol? Escanol? Yeah. Um, and they, you could get it pretty much at any Oriental market. And I haven't been inside a Oriental market in a while since the pandemic, but I'm pretty sure you could still buy it now. And you can just like, you can just order it. But like, yeah, whitening soap is a big thing. And I remember my mom used to use it. And like every night she used to rub that stuff. Like you, it's like this liquid, I don't know. It kind of just looks like water because it's clear. And you just put it on a cotton ball and you wipe your face with it. And then nowadays there's like a skin whitening injection. So I was supposed to go to the Philippines a couple years ago with my mom and my brother. But then my dad got sick so we couldn't go. Um, but at the time my mom was talking to my cousins and they're like, yeah, we're going to bring her to, um, or me, they were going to bring me to wherever they get the skin whitening injections. And my mom, like I said, being like, um, the health freak that she is, she was like, no, don't, don't you dare like inject her without poison. I mean, that's not exactly what she said, but that's basically what she said, but they wanted to bring me to get my skin white because I am, I mean, I'm not dark right now because I've just been staying home since the pandemic. Not gonna lie. <laughs> so I'm not as dark as I usually am, but I am on the darker side. Well, no, I'm not. Okay, as compared to my family, I'm on the darker side. But as Filipinos as a whole, I'm not like super, super dark. I'm, I feel like I'm just average Filipino dark skinned. Um, but compared to my family, because we do have a lot of Spanish blood too. So like my brother is lighter skinned than me. And I think... Like my dad was a little lighter skin and some people in my family are a little lighter, but I, I'm pretty dark compared to them. Anyways, so they wanted to go and get these skin whitening injections. And that's the weirdest thing. And is that safe? Like to whiten your skin? Like I don't even, I can't even think of, I can't even fathom. Like Sorry, I'm just, like, looking at my skin. I'm like, how would that even work? Like, do they just inject you and then your skin just brightens the next day? That's so weird. I feel like you would look sickly. But anyways, that's, like, all the rage over there right now, I guess. And then also, like, with Filipino culture, so there's TFC, the Filipino channel, and there's, like, all these other, you know, Filipino networks. 
And if you are Filipino and you've seen that or your parents watch it, I grew up with it. So I've been watching it since I was little and some family members still watch it. But if you look at all the famous people, like none of them look like an average Filipino person, which I mean, you can say that about American television as well. But, you know, that's why media is just so toxic in general, because no one looks like that, you know. Um, but in the Philippines specifically, like none of them, I don't want to say none of them, a lot of them don't look like your average Filipino. A lot of them are light skinned. A lot of them have like nose jobs. Um, a lot of them are tall or, you know, or the illusion of being tall, like, Cause that's what they favor, like the long legs and being tall and all that. And, um, specifically like Miss Philippines, I can't stand Miss Philippines. And I don't know if that's just me, like, but Miss Philippines, she's always a hybrid. <laughs> like she is never just full fledged Filipino. Like the last one I can remember, cause it's been a few years since I've seen it. But, like, the last one I can remember, she wasn't even full Filipino. She was full, she was half Filipino, half Australian, I think. And then this new one, I had to do a Google search, but this new one, whatever the last one was, like, 2019, I guess, she's half Filipino, half Middle Eastern, I think. Either way, she's just not, they're never full Filipino, is what I'm trying to get at. And so... When that happens, when you're not full Filipino, you know, you get these other traits, right? So, like, my niece, for example, she's not full Filipino, so she's got the little cute little ski slope nose, and she's light-skinned, and, um, and, like, so those are, like, the very, those are the more favorable, you know, traits. And so I think that's why Miss Philippines always ends up being, like, some type of hybrid, like, not a full-blooded Filipino, because... Because you can still run to be Miss Philippines, but because they're only, like, partial, like, they get all the, quote-unquote, good traits, you know? And so that always, like, irks me because, I don't know, I'm just thinking about all the little Filipino girls and thinking, like, they must not think they're good enough because they're not light-skinned, they have a flat, wide nose, and and they're not tall and have long slender legs and all that stuff and but that's like who always wins right the person that always wins the person that always makes it onto tv the person that gets like rich and famous are all these these other like filipinos who don't even look like your average filipino and a lot of times they're like mixed with a different race and they end up having like those quote-unquote good traits you know the non-filipino traits if you will and so and then, so, like, I was always exposed to that because we, you know, that's just a little piece of home for my parents watching, like, the Filipino channel, all that stuff. So, I was definitely exposed to that and exposed to American media where, like, everyone who's famous has to not only be very talented, but a lot of times they have to also be very beautiful, aka the Disney Channel. And I love the Disney Channel. Don't, you know... Don't take me wrong. I love Disney. I have Disney Plus. I recently watched That's a Raven. And if you guys love That's a Raven, you should watch her Raven's Home. Like, it's still the same humor. Hilarious. Love that show. But anyways, um, but yeah, the Disney Channel. I mean, look at if you're like a 90s baby like me, you know, there's Hannah Montana, Lizzie McGuire, Wizards of Waverly Place, like all those, those girls, like... They were all skinny. The only one that wasn't skinny, super skinny, was Raven, which is, like, one of my top favorite Disney Channel shows, if you haven't, like, guessed that already. But everybody else was, like, super skinny, super slim, like, not an ounce of fat on their body. <laughs> or It seemed like it, at least. And so, like, that's why media is just so toxic, because no one really is that but that's all you see on tv that's why i actually really applaud all the actresses on orange is the new black because they are just raw you know no makeup just the 
the prison outfits or whatever. And it's just raw, not your glamorous Hollywood, what you're used to seeing and being that vulnerable and being that like just raw, like no nothing, like definitely applaud those women because I don't think I would, I could do that. I mean, I don't even post selfies now. Imagine being on set every single day. And some of them, like, it's not just raw, but they, like, make them look like drug addicts and whatever. So it's not just, not only are they not making or wearing makeup, they're also wearing makeup that makes them look like, you know, (laughs) have the rotten teeth and all that, all that good stuff. You know, I definitely applaud them because I could never do that. (laughs) That that is too vulnerable for me. No thanks. That's why I like podcasts. Because the part, the way a person looks doesn't matter. And it's just about the content. And honestly, I'll probably never record myself for YouTube. Because, like, you know, there's some podcasters who do that. Who they also record them like doing the podcast and then uploading it to YouTube. So I upload to YouTube, but it's just like a stagnant um, or static video. There's no, you don't see me or anything like that. It's just like, I think it's just like the image of my, my uh, album art. So those are just like, what are the things that kind of contributed to my self image? And like, so I wanted to just talk a little bit about that, but then that ended up being much longer than I thought. There's just like so much, you know, so much contributing to your self image. And I'm, I know it's not just my culture, but like the constant media that we're exposed to every single day, especially like now, like I feel like kids now are probably exposed to even more because they have social media. You know, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's TikTok, there's Twitter, there's YouTube, there's, um, on top of that with TV. And like, there's just, there's just like an overload of media and just constantly perfect, beautiful looking people. So maybe that's why there's a rise in like men also suffering from BDD because it's just the constant exposure of all these people, you know? And ugh, it's just so, so toxic. But anyways, so what I've done so far that I think has helped me a lot is um cleaning my social media. I did like a whole cleansing if you will so i unfollowed a bunch of celebrities so i used to follow like a a lot of celebrities just because i don't know i really like their music or whatever and i wanted to know like if they got a new album out or what have you but honestly you could just follow them on spotify and they'll tell you anyways so i unfollowed celebrities because i didn't want to like be exposed to that every single day it's just too hard to look at um And then I um, followed people who I just don't talk to anymore. Like, if I don't talk to you, I'm not friends with you. If we were never friends to begin with, then I definitely unfollowed you. Because I did, like, I think I started my Instagram and Facebook page, like, senior year of high school. So, for some reason, I had friends who we were friends just because, like, maybe we had a class together. But we weren't actually friends' friends. And so I just, like, deleted all those people. So I just did a whole entire cleanse of social media. And I just kept it to who I actually have the relationship with and, like, talk to. And then I did. there are some high school people who I don't really talk to anymore or keep in touch with. But, like, I really genuinely like them as a person. And some of them, like, you know. They have funny posts, so I enjoy their content. (laughs) And then for my, like, podcast one, um, my podcast one, I follow a lot of, like, podcast, like, tips and tricks kinds of pages, and I do follow other podcasters. However, I just follow the podcast page itself. I don't follow, like, their personal pages. Because sometimes they have, like, the podcast itself, and then the host will have their, like, personal pages so I did used to follow that but I actually did a cleanse recently and just unfollowed those because there is this one chick who um I'm not saying like people shouldn't post like selfies or whatever but she did post a lot of risque kind of photos and like all power to her you know like if that is your thing you like doing that and it makes you feel good and gives you confidence you're like you know by all means do you (laughs) Do you, boo? So I, but for me, being exposed to that and seeing that and like, because she's so 
like beautiful, whatever. I just like kind of unfollowed her. Um, but I kept, I still followed her like actual podcast channel or podcast page. Um, just not her personal one. It just helps not to be constantly exposed to like famous people and like these, like for me, like unachievable, you know, looks. And so I try to refrain from that. Um, and then I stopped going on the explore page of Instagram. So if you don't know what that is, like if you don't have Instagram, there's like the explore page and it's like just random posts and stories from other people who you don't follow. Um, but they're like, I think there's like an algorithm or something where it shows like things you may be interested in or whatever. And I, for, but for some reason, like no matter who you are or what you're interested in, the explore page still has a bunch of pictures of just like beautiful, perfect looking, like men and women, you know? And so I stopped doing that because then it was getting a little too, too toxic for me because then I start feeling bad about myself. And it's like, and then you also forget sometimes that a lot of these photos are probably photoshopped or like, I don't know. They may not be the real thing. And so there's like, but I just can't like look at all that stuff. So, and it's really helped me not to go on an explore page and not follow like celebrities and whatnot. Um, and then another thing that's really been helpful is that, uh, well, like, people say this all the time that a lot of things that can help you with your mental health and physical health is just doing something active. Right. And so, um, me and some family and friends are doing the yoga challenge. There's a 30 day yoga challenge. I'll link that in the show notes in case you guys are interested. Um, it's on YouTube, but it's a lot easier to follow on Amazon. If you have Amazon prime video, um, and there's other ones like, so I'm doing the 30 day yoga for weight loss, but then they, she has like other stuff. So, you know, go check her out. I'll put it in the show notes. But um, I did finish the 30 day challenge last month and I'm doing it again for October and I do it every morning and it's like 30 minutes and it makes me feel amazing. It makes me feel really good and energized to tackle the day. And it's great for beginners who like has haven't done yoga before. I did it like I used to do yoga in the morning, but um, I just like in high school, but then I stopped because life so I am like a beginner again. I have to start it up again. So it's nice that she starts you off slow and it's just makes me feel really good. And after doing the 30 day challenge last month, like I definitely can see a difference and I definitely feel stronger and feel more flexible. And that really helps with my self-confidence and like my self image a little bit. So that's been really helpful um, so if you guys want to try that out, I highly suggest it. And if you like, just don't like yoga, like I highly suggest just doing something active every day. Like I also after yoga, like I walk my dog in the morning, which is kind of the great thing about having a dog because then, you know, it kind of makes you be active because you need to walk them or take them out. Um, but that's been really good. So yoga and then walk my dog. So I'm active for like an hour in the morning. Um, and then now that it's cooling down. Hopefully it's going to stay cooling down. Um, I also want to try to walk my dog during lunch, my lunch period. That way I have like activity in the middle of the day. And so I'm not just like active in the morning, but then I sit the rest of the day because I do work still and um, it's in front of a desk. So I do stare at a computer all day for eight hours. So I want to take my, my hour lunch and, um, incorporate some activity in there, but yeah. So, um, I did bring this up to my therapist and I did talk to her about BDD and how BDD may be something that I'm struggling with, or I have, I mean, um, but the main focus is just my self image and my conf self confidence and my self esteem and like really trying to figure that out. And, and really it's all like she mentioned to me that it's all about retraining your brain. Like there isn't some magical pill that you can just take and all of a sudden you like love yourself and love how you look. It's all about like retraining your brain. And so in therapy, we've been doing exercises and um, they sound kind of dumb. <laughs> they sound very 
minuscule, but they actually really help a lot. And so I wanted to share that in case like that's something maybe that can help you if you're suffering with the same thing or struggling with the same thing. And so one of the very first exercises she had me do was to simply say thank you when someone compliments me because my instant response is usually like, um, sometimes I joke around and I say like, I know, you know, like sarcastically, but I don't actually mean it. But like my instant reaction, a lot of times is just deflecting. And so a good example is like my friend, um, she told me that she liked my voice a lot when she's listening to the my podcast. That's very soothing. And then my response was like, really? I hate my voice. I don't like what it sounds like, but thanks. And that's just um, something where I'm trying to work on. So my therapist suggested instead of deflecting every single time, just accept the compliment as factual and as something that someone believes, you know, that my friend truly does believe I have a good voice and simply just say thank you. And I think um, now that I'm thinking about it, like saying thank you is just the more respectful response anyways, because when you deflect, I feel like that seems a little disrespectful. So, so that's a good thing. I'm like practicing that anyways, regardless. Um, And then we are also working on, or I'm working on rephrasing the way I say things to be more positive um, I'm trying to think of an example. So an example that um, we used was, so I said something along the lines of, I could have made other choice or I could have made better choices. I think is what I said. And she said, try thinking of rephrasing that phrase. And I couldn't, I didn't understand what she meant by that. Cause I was like, no, like I could have done better. Like, what do you want me to say? I do get a little frustrated sometimes. So, but she was saying like, um, instead of saying I could have done better or could have made better choices, you can just say last night I reflected on the fact that I could have made better choices. So, you know, you're just, you're reflecting back instead of just being down on yourself and saying I should have done better. If that, I don't know if that makes sense, but if that makes sense, then awesome. Because that didn't make sense to me when I was, um, when she asked me to do that. <laughs> Another thing is keeping a journal. So I haven't done this yet. I have a journal and I used to journal a lot. It's just, I don't know. I just get lazy, I guess. But I guess journaling is supposed to be really helpful. And it also helps track your progress. So if you write down how you feel now and then you continue to do that like daily, weekly, however you want to do it. Um, And then you like later down the road, you can reflect back on how you felt and like you can see the progress you've made. Like maybe a month ago you felt like extremely hideous and you don't want to go out to now, like you go out with your friends and you don't think that way anymore, you know, tracking your progress. And so I haven't done that. I should do that. I've, I have my journal out and I have the pen out, but then I never like actually do it. So I think I, I should try. I should try. Um, another one is, uh, so another thing that people with BDD, like what therapists have them do is exposure therapy. And so one of the exercises she has for me is to stare at myself in the mirror until you pass the discomfort. And I actually get this because it does make sense because, um, with my voice, So when I started this podcast, it was really hard for me to edit my episode because I just didn't like my voice. Like it, it was just, it sounded very horrible, but because like we're what, this is episode 22 and I've had to listen to it 22 times. Plus all the times I've had to like, I made like a sound bite or what have you. Now I'm just kind of numb to my voice. Like I, I'm indifferent to it. I don't hate it and I don't like it. Like it's just, it's normal to me. And so I I get that exposure therapy does work. However, I have not done it. And she asked me to do this like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. It's been a while and I haven't done it yet. Because like I said earlier, I don't like looking in the mirror and I don't like looking at myself in the mirror. So that's a really tough one to do, but I will do it eventually. Um, and then one of the last things is recently 
was this uh, book. So this, she gave me this recommendation to read a book. Um, it's called Mothers, Daughters, and Body Image, Learning to Love Ourselves as We Are by Hilary L. McBride. So I will link that in the in the show notes as well. But that's a really good book. I've, I'm only halfway, and then I had my sister-in-law borrow it because I liked it so much that I thought maybe she would like it too, especially because like she has a little girl and a little boy. And I thought like, like this is a, it's a good book for everybody, but it's a good book, especially for parents. And so I wanted to, I wanted to like have her read it and then I'll continue reading it when she's done, but it's a really good book. And I will definitely send that to you guys or um, share that with you guys in the show notes. It's really like, I like it. It talks about how, it talks about how, like, your mom's self-image affects you as a kid. So, like, the way she felt about herself and how she talks about her own body and talks about her own image can affect you as a child. And it made a lot of sense. Like, it makes a whole lot of sense. And it's just very eye-opening. So, that one's a really, really good one. So, those are some of the exercises I'm working with through therapy and they've been helping so far. I should have done a journal because I don't know what my progress is, but I think it's, I think it's helping so far. So in summary, if you experience the same thing and you feel like you're maybe struggling with the same thing that I am, you know, please go check out the BDD foundation website. Um, There's a lot of resources in there, a lot of, you know, resources to help you figure that out and figure out how to get the help that you need. Um, they do have the same, some quizzes, like I, like I said earlier, and, you know, another great thing you do, you can do as well, kind of like what I would mention earlier, like my employer, because of the pandemic offered free sessions. So who knows, maybe your employer offers the same thing. So I would definitely go check that out. Go check out like HR, reach out to your HR person and see if that's something your company offers or check, um, your health insurance, your health insurance would know that information as well. Um, so definitely go check that out. And then what else? Oh, don't forget to vote. (laughs) I'll still link like ballotpedia if you want to see what's on your ballot. Uh, talking about voting though. Um, I did something. I, uh, I, I reached out to a YouTuber there, YouTuber that I watch. I don't know why I did this. I don't do this. I never do this. I don't ever reach out to people or like, (laughs) I don't reach out to famous people is what I mean. Not like to don't reach out to people ever. Um, anyways, so I do feel kind of bad for picking on her though. Cause, uh, but honestly, I just got fed up with the hate one day and I couldn't help myself, I guess. And I guess I just chose her. (laughs) Um, and I think a lot of it has to do because maybe I was disappointed in her or just like disappointed in general. Um, and this is why I should only follow the main page and not people's personal pages. Like I mentioned earlier, so I didn't even follow my own advice at that time. It was a while ago. But I did unfollow her, <laughs> and I only follow her YouTube channel. So I don't un- I unfollow the personal pages. But anyways, um, she is like her and her husband uh have a YouTube channel. I'm not gonna say who, which one. So I do like watch like all their videos all the time, and I really like them. And I think they're very I, they seem like very nice, genuine people. But obviously, like we don't know anyone and who they truly are in real life. You don't like you know I can say that about myself too. Like you guys don't know who I am and who I am truly in real life. Um, I do try to be a very genuine on my podcast, but that's anyways. And that that's a sorry, that's a different tangent. Back to like this one. <laughs> um. But anyways, like, yeah, so I do, like, watch them a lot, and I like their YouTube channel, blah, 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 but, like, because of, like, um, it's voting season and election year, people just, I don't know, there's just too much hate in the world, and so in her story, she wrote, if you're a Trump supporter, unfollow me now, and first of all, like, I'm not saying I'm a Trump supporter, okay? Like, this would have peeved me regardless of who she said. If she said Biden, it would have peeved me just as equally. So this isn't, like, a political rant. Like, I'm not saying this, like, because I'm, like, supporting. I'm not saying who I'm supporting. I'm just saying, like, like just 
you know, just that little blurb just really rubbed me the wrong way. So this isn't like, again, like I said, like this isn't a political rant, you know, I will never tell you who or or what you should vote for ever, you know, who you vote for or what you vote for. That's up to you and for you alone to decide, like you should vote for what you believe in and like, don't, you know, don't go listening to other people, listen to your own voice and what, and your own beliefs and morals and whatever. So this isn't a political rant. Just want to make that clear. I'm not saying who I'm voting for or who I support. I'm just, you know, just, that's just the post that she posted. And I, I'm getting to like why that peeved me. Anyways, so it rubbed me the wrong way. And the reason why it rubbed me the wrong way is because I took this and looked at it from the perspective of a devout descri- subscriber or follower, whatever they're called. Because, you know, even though, like, I like their channel and I listen to them and or watch them all the time, I'm not, like, a devout subscriber. I don't donate to them. I don't, you know, hit the thumbs up button and all, and all that stuff. I'm not, like, I don't uh, spend money or anything. I just like to watch their videos. So I'm not, like, a devout follower. And so when I saw the post, I was looking it through the eyes of a devout follower. Because I'm thinking, like, this person who... Um, I'm thinking about a person who may have sent them packages and sent them letters, sent them gifts. Maybe they're a Patreon member, you know, maybe they're one of their biggest contributors because, you know, a lot of these YouTubers, I don't say a lot of, uh, you know, some of these YouTubers get to live the life they have because of their members and because of the money they receive from their, you know, viewers. And so these, a lot of these, YouTubers, they owe a lot to these people for giving them this opportunity to live this type of lifestyle. And, you know, so I'm looking at it from that perspective, from a person who like contributes to their lifestyle and someone who may have really loved them and looked up to them. And so with having a post like that, regardless of who she said, she could have said Trump, Biden or whoever, um, it doesn't matter what But just that post, like, what that means to me is that she basically completely dismissed that person and devalued that person as a worthy human being, as a worthy fan, because of one aspect of that person, you know? Like, she doesn't know anything about them except for that one detail. Like, because of that one detail of you, she is specifically asking you to remove yourself from her friends list. And I, I don't know. I just didn't like that. And honestly, I'm a little intolerant right now of just political posts in general because people get so nasty on social media and it's from both sides, you know, like it doesn't um, matter like what party you are with either, you know, all sides of like this political whatever, um, people are nasty. They're nasty to each other. And there's a lot of hate and it happens four years, you know, every four years, it's like the same thing. People are just so awful and nasty and it's worse and worse because, you know, of social media. Like I didn't really have that in high school. And so, I mean, it's always been around, like people are mean to each other, you know, based on their political beliefs, but now it's just like, it's public and it's out there for everyone to see. And so I ended up messaging her cause I'm not going to like read what I wrote, but I basically told her that that seemed very unkind to say. And like, she did respond, but I didn't really care much for her response. And I just didn't further the conversation because I realized like, after she responded, like, why do I even care about this person? I don't know this person. We have no personal ties and I don't know. And people can do whatever they want. So I left it on a good note and I'm just going to leave it at that. Like, I'm not going to mention like who it is and what we said, but I just couldn't help myself. I like had to say that because I'm just sick and tired of people being so mean to each other because like, I don't, for me, like, I can never say that to someone. I can never just just disown someone so easily. Because that's only one aspect of you. That's only one little detail of you, you know? Everyone has different beliefs. And the key word is belief. You know, these are your political beliefs. Shouldn't, like, it's, 
not a reason to unfriend a person. Like, I can never stop being friends with someone because they chose a different path, you know, because people are doing what's best for them. And I just don't understand, like, why are people so quick to do this, you know? Like, I just heard a story about mom and son who live with each other. Like, they're no longer talking to each other because they're voting for two, they're voting for different people. And it's like, again, every four years, people's friendships and relationships end in a blink of an eye. That's why it's such a, like, forbidden subject, you know? Like, that's like the two things you don't talk about, it's politics and religion, because people get nasty and but for me I just would never do this to a family member or a friend because I know like at least for my circle I'm not gonna speak for everybody but I know for at least for like the people I know and that I care about and I love like they vote for who they think is best for them and their loved ones and I think that's I'm hopefully that's like what most voters do is that they vote for who they think is best or they do what they think is best for them and their loved ones. Right. Because whether like whoever you support, it doesn't mean that you necessarily love every single aspect of the person, you know. So like whoever a, a voter decides to choose doesn't necessarily mean that they agree with every aspect of that person, but they're just going to vote for whoever they believe would be the best person suited to do the job because people are given choices every day and they have to just work with what they're given. And so that like, that doesn't solely describe who a person is like, you know, there are good and bad people on whatever side you're on. It doesn't matter. And I think to just judge someone or to simply devalue someone's life and devalue someone's opinion and devalue someone as an individual just because of who they vote for, that seems outrageous to me. And it doesn't make sense because, like, it's just not who they are. It's not – it doesn't define – like, it doesn't encompass, like, 100% of who they are as a person. Because a good person can still vote for someone you disagree with. It doesn't, you know, it just doesn't make them a bad person. Their beliefs are just different. And if everyone can just agree to disagree and accept that people are different and believe in different things, like, I think life would be easier and much more harmonious for everyone. So, that's my little rant. <laughs> I'm just tired of all of it. Like, I just just be kind to one another and put your differences aside. And honestly, I can't wait for November to be over. <laughs> uh, anyways, thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for making it through that little rant of mine. I hope you found, found this episode to be informative and little and helpful and I hope it like brought some awareness to what BDD is and I hope I was able to shed some light on it. And maybe if you are struggling with the same thing, I hope this episode empowers you to go seek help. And so, yeah. So thanks again for listening. If you enjoy the show and want to stay in the know, please follow me on social media. I am on Facebook and on Instagram. You can also check out my website at the talkative introvert podcast.com. All the information will be on there as well as in the show notes. Please help support the show by rating and reviewing it on Apple Podcasts. If you leave a review, I'll make sure to feature it in a future episode. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you guys in the next episode.